thank you, thank you, Christiana, for your time. And I share with you some some logs about one runner and uh, running in the Kubernetes clusters and the Kubernetes clusters um, is um, and is formed with three nodes and the customer is facing some some technical issues with it, with, with this so and I think you, you you had the same situation in the demo system so that is why I reached you and yep. now so and to talk about your experience thank you very much you're welcome so where you're going to deploy the GitLab runner using the ham chart in fact you are deploying a service that is running inside the Kubernetes cluster and is uh, uh, giving a look to our queue in the GitLab side and when we create a new job that is requiring a runner the service uh, take the job and create the runner if you want to scale up the runner's capabilities there is a parameter inside the M chart that is called a concurrency so from there you can decide how many runner you can spin at the same time looking at your screen it seems that you have a lot of runner that are under creation you could face a couple of trouble regarding that the first is that uh, you empty the number of concurrent runner available so your job uh, is keep it in the queue and maybe you get the timeout or whatever before that the job have a, a runner available to be taken the second is uh, if you have uh, a large number of uh, concurrent job allowed for each job our scheduler we make a request to the Kubernetes API creating a new deployment especially for a small cluster this could impact the API response and uh, maybe Kubernetes uh, is not responding uh, in the correct time or uh, also on the node side you could empty the resources especially talking about small nodes so uh, what you can do with that uh, is uh, first of all monitoring the resources in the cluster to ensure that nothing is going to be uh, to be empty you are not uh, filling the memory or the CPU or whatever. So give a look to the Kubernetes cluster itself to understand if uh, you are going under pressure for a specific resources. Second, give a look to the number of runners uh, that are in a specific state that you can use a lot of monitoring system to do that. So if you see that you are going to schedule uh, 50 runner at the same time, probably one scheduler is not the best. What you can do is you can deploy more than one uh, GitLab runner ham chart. So you will have more than one schedule and you can reduce for each scheduler the number of job of job that they can run at the same time. In this way, the load on our side and the scheduler will be splitted to the different uh, uh, worker. Uh, if you are dosing uh, the Kubernetes API, in that case, you can or just uh, lower the number of concurrent job to avoid this kind of DOS, or just add the resources uh, to the master, not to the slave. That uh, where is the API layer? So this is the common scenario about that kind of situation. What you can do is uh, you can make uh, uh, some try. For instance, uh, what uh, what uh, we did inside the demo system uh, platform to test how many job we was able to reach is uh, to create a dummy project. And uh, in one stage, you are able to set uh, um, how many job in parallel have to be executed for the same job. So I used the uh, locust to create a dummy request and I scaled up the number of requests using the concurrent, uh, uh, the parallel parameter inside the job. In that way, I've been able to generate 50, 100, 200 requests for our runner schedule at the same time. And then we monitored uh, when, for instance, the 
Kubernetes cluster was not responding anymore, when our scheduler was not responding anymore. And at the end, basing on the dimension of our cluster on both sides, GitLab and Kubernetes, we understood the, the correct parameters that allow us to be scalable, but also not uh, creating any kind of trouble. So this is approach that you can try looking at the runner scalability. Great, and Cristiano, thank you very much. And it's really helpful for us to, under, to understand this and this problem. And I have a question and one more question. Yeah. And you mentioned about the resources in the Kubernetes uh, nodes. And, and according to the customer is face, that is facing this, this, this issue, there are not lack of resources in any of their uh, nodes. Um, okay. We also see that the pods and is creating mostly in one of the nodes and not not balancing between between them. Um, do you have some some experience in, in, in this kind of? Um, this really depends from the provider. Uh, some provider have different policies about uh, distributing the job across the node. For instance, if you are using the auto scaling on the node side, maybe the scheduler is trying to fill just one node and then pass to the second to keep uh, an empty node that can be scaled down. And uh, this is not a problem. It's not about that. Uh, obviously, you will start facing trouble where you feel uh, the wool cluster. So if you are not consuming the wool cluster, this is not your trouble. Don't worry about that. Uh, keep in mind that, uh, especially for cloud providers, unfortunately, usually the resources are located to the master and not shared. So it could be not that easy to understand if the master is going under pressure because uh, it's totally transparent. If you take uh, AVS or Google Clouds, you don't have information about the master. You, you can check the version, you can interact with them from the dashboard, but usually you don't know if uh, it's still responsible or not. What you can do during the test uh, is try to make a request, uh, also just with cube control to the master, like cube uh, control get deployment. And you can track if the master is still responsive or for instance, uh, the, responsi the response is getting a lot of time or they just fail it. This kind of situation that could happen are, uh, are a feedback that the master is going under pressure. Okay, great and Cristiano, thank you very much. Um, do you have more uh, another point that we should take in, in consideration and according to your experience? No, my, my only suggestion is make step-by-step a, step a test and monitor every parameter that is relevant so that you can find the correct balance between auto-scaling and endorsing uh, your cluster. This is what we do and this is uh, usually the, the best approach for any, any production environment. Great. And, and in case the issue is in within the API of the Kubernetes cluster that is um, in that you have a lot of requests for prop, prop creations that and, and never accomplished to, 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 to finish. Um, in this case, there are some parameters we can change and within the you Kubernetes can. cluster. Or you low you put down the number of requests that you are allowing, like the current parameters, or you could just spin up two different cluster and use two runners uh, pool in two different cluster. It's true that uh, actually the main provider started to build also the master site, but uh, if you don't have the control on the master uh, resources, the only solution is to spin up a new cluster aside that, or to talk with your provider because maybe they have a different solution regarding the master resource management that I don't know. Um, great, this is a good point and um, because um, we need to, to guide the customers to talk with their provider to find a solution of this. This is not um, a, a GitLab 
and GitLab issue is more related yep. to the Kubernetes cluster. What I exactly. If you if is after your test, you discover that it's the Kubernetes API that is not responding. What usually you do in a on-premises cluster, you add resources or node to the masters, and in that way you balance the different requests across the different node till you get you know a good level of response under any kind of load. Unfortunately, this is not the main model for the cloud providers because usually tr master are transparent and till now they are not being billed. If you was buying a cluster, for instance, on Google Cloud a few days ago, you was not paying for the master, you was just paying for the slave. Actually, they are changing this policy depending from the provider. They have different price or different to date, but these resources was uh, free till a few time ago. Now you're going to pay that. So I can imagine that the provider will provide soon different tire of master because obviously if you have to manage three small nodes, it's not the same amount of request if you want to manage a 15 or 20 node cluster. In general for Kubernetes, the suggestion is to don't have uh, to to be clustered because there is a lot of constraint of guarding out so just the network side that is uh, giving you the suggestion to keep a small cluster with small nodes but obviously three, three nodes and ten nodes can have a lot of difference in any way also if we are not talking about 100 or 200 nodes Great, very clear, and Cristiano. And again, thank you very much for uh, for your time for this conversation. And, and I'm sure and we are going to help customer with um, with this iteration. So, and I have no more questions and um, for you. Um, and it's up to you. If you have um, another thought to to share with us. Thank you.